I declare that no weapon formed against this time shall prosper. And Father, I thank you that the Holy Spirit has the liberty to move up and down every out, in and out of every road, touch, here, deliver, set free. Speak through my vocal cords. Think through my mind. None of me and all of you. And God, I decrease so that the incorruptible seed, your word, may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. And I give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And XL Church said, Amen. You may be seated in the house of God. A little housekeeping item right here. Pay me no mind. Media, uh, you don't start that clock back there until I finish praying. Don't start it when I start praying. When I come up out of prayer, that's when we start the time o'clock. Amen. Love you guys. Uh, we've been talking about gaining revelation. Gaining revelation of the Lord's Prayer. And how many people have been looking at the Lord's Prayer? Let me see a show of hands. Oh, 100% of the church has been going through the Lord's Prayer. 100%. Boy, I'm just blessed to pastor you guys. Listen, the Lord's Prayer is a, is a, a laid out format for our everyday lives. The Lord's Prayer, if you look at it close enough like we've been looking at it, it gets down into the nitty, what I call the nitty gritty of our lives. Things that we don't know sometimes that we're doing, things that we should be doing and we're not doing. You know, a lot of people think they walk in forgiveness and they don't. A lot of people think they forgave and, 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 they, and they haven't forgiven anyone. But the Lord's Prayer says, if you come to me daily, I'm going to deal with your forgiveness. I'm going to deal with your temptation. I'm going to deliver you from evil. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to make sure you understand that I'm your source of deliverance. I'm going to make sure you understand that I'm your source of supply. I'm going to give you daily bread, which is today and tomorrow. I'm going to make sure that you hallow my name, that you greatly revere me, that you honor me. And I want you to know that I am not just some, some cosmic deity in the sky. I am your father in heaven. Abba, I am your daddy. You're coming to your daddy. So when you come to your daddy, let it all, just, just, just let it all flow. Don't protect yourself from nothing because I love you and I want to hear from you daily. So we're gaining revelation on the Lord's prayer. And I want, to, I, want, I want to drop this in your spirit before we go to the scripture. Uh, but we're going to go to Matthew 6 if you, if you go ahead and go there. Um, <clears throat> listen to this. Priority prayer and spontaneous prayer are never at odds with one another. I set a time, I pray in traffic. I set a time, I pray when I'm cutting the grass. I set a time to pray in the morning, I pray when I'm, 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 I'm doing laundry. I set a time uh, 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 to pray in the morning. I pray when I have to fold my wife's blouses because those babies would drive me absolutely ballistic. It's no special way to fold blouses because they're so soft and it's like just flopping all over the place and I do my best, but I, 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 I got to pray right there. So there's no, there's no, there's, they're not at odds. But I can tell you this, what you want to make sure you're doing is seeking the Father in secret. He says, when you do this, I reward you in the open. He says, don't be like the hypocrites. And the Greek word for hypocrites is actor. Don't come to me acting. <laughs> you know, don't be in front of people acting when you pray. When you pray. pray, Abba Father, you're talking to your daddy. So, you know, they're not at odds. And anytime you find someone arguing about prayer, it, it doesn't even make sense to me. I pray two hours. I pray three minutes. I pray in the morning. I pray in the midday. I pray at night. Hey, I, man, I, I, look, I just, I don't even set no time to pray. I just kind of pray when God lays it on my heart. Okay, it's spontaneous prayer. But, 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 but if somebody sets their time at 6 o'clock to get up and, 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 and have their first fruits with God, there's nothing wrong with that. But they're never at odds. They're never at odds. Amen? Matthew 6, gain a revelation of the Lord's Prayer. Let's hop into this word. Glory to God. Ain't God good? Matthew 6. We're going to move swiftly through the Word of God, and we're going to be dealing with today uh, gaining revelation of the Lord's Prayer, but we're going to deal with two components of the Lord's Prayer, which is where it talks about deliver us from evil and lead us not into temptation. We're going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to bring that home today. We're going to bring that home today because we're gaining revelation of the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> uh, Matthew 6, verse 1. Take heed that you, that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have your reward of your father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when you do thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do, as the actors do. 
in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. The reward is of men. Don't, listen, there's, a powerful, there's something very powerful about a private prayer life. There's something very powerful about a private work ethic. If you are in sports and the only time you pick up your baseball, pick up your soccer ball, pick up your softball, pick up your football, pick up your basketball, the only time you pick, up, pick it up is when you play. Nine times out of ten, you're going you're gonna to fall into the category of average. But when your coach is not looking and your teammates don't know it and your parents don't know it and you're outside and you're just working on your craft in private, I promise you it will show up on the court. There's something about taking pride in a private work ethic, a private uh, prayer life. And he's telling us this. Uh, verse 4. Uh, uh, verse 3. But when you do your alms, let not the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Verse 4. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which sees us in secret shall reward us in the open. That's the kind of God we serve. Verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites, the actors. The hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. We used to do this uh, tip drill uh, when we, you know, in high school, man, Christmas tournament, high school Christmas tournaments. When I played basketball was the highlight. Everybody was on break. Everybody was in town. And you had that three-day Christmas tournament. And we had this tip drill and and, 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 and you know, you, 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 the point guard would take off with the smallest guy here. Put it on there, and everybody just come behind it and just tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it. Well, by the time I hit the 10th grade, I had some little bunnies on me. I said, man, man, I, I want to I I follow up the line. And when I followed up the line, I would take it, and I would just go up and get it, and I'd just drop it down in there. I wouldn't dunk it, but I would just drop it down in there. And every, everybody went crazy. And i tell you what, it was in the open. <laughs> And boy, did it feel good while they was cheering. Boy, did it feel good while they was talking to me. But the bottom line was, Derek, when this ball goes up in the air, what you did in private is going to carry you on this court. And I soon got a revelation of, you know what, uh, my dad put me a basketball court in the backyard, uh, a, a, a full court, uh, put me a little, 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 built me a little shed out there for, for TVs and fridges and snacks and for my buddies to sit on the couch and all that kind of stuff. And I was out of school on that thing. Uh, before school, out there, break, out there, and let me tell you something. I, 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 look, the head coach of Indiana at that time came to my house. <laughs> so it so, 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 wasn't no fluke. But I understood something that he's trying to teach us right here. Work hard in private. But he's saying right here, meet me in private. Do it in secret. Something powerful happens. I reward you in the open. Amen. He says, he says, verse 6, but when you, when you pray, enter into thy closet, and, thy, and, and when you shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which is in secret shall reward thee openly, verse 7, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen did, for they think they shall be heard for much of their speaking, verse 8, be not therefore like unto them, for your father, watch this, no need to act, I know what you need before you come to me. All I want you to do is acknowledge my greatness. Hallow my name. Acknowledge that I'm here and you're here. Acknowledge that I'm your source of deliverance. Acknowledge that I'm your source of supply. Acknowledge that because I already know what you need before you ask. So why act? And after this, Jesus said, after this manner, here's how we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Watch this. Watch the source of supply. Give us this day, today and tomorrow. Give us this day, our daily bread, today and tomorrow. Give us this day, our daily bread, today and tomorrow. Give us supply and provision for today, and we're for sure it's going to be there tomorrow. He says, pray this to me. Verse 12. And forgive us of our debts and 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 and. and, and, and and, and one translation says, in, in, in the other gospel, it says, forgive us of our trespasses. Because we, we've said some wrong stuff to folks. We make the wrong face to folks. You know, a lot of times you ain't got to say nothing. You, you, just, you just look a certain way. 
know, if you're married and, and, and you're trying to, you're pouring your heart out, so and so, you're pouring your heart out, this, that, and the other, and you, and you, and you, and you look at your wife, and, 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 you, and you can just look in the eyes. And she ain't got to say nothing. And when you look at her eyes, the eyes are speaking. And she's like, would you hurry up? My God, you, oh, God, get to the point. My goodness gracious. And vice versa. Let me tell you why that's, why that's so important. Because you don't know who you've trespassed against. You don't know who you've said the wrong thing to. So since you don't know, that's why you drop your head and you pray. Lord, forgive me for any wrongdoing I've done, knowingly and unknowingly. I know I'm not perfect, God. I know I can mess up. I know I'm flawed. I know I don't have all the correct words all the time. Lord, forgive me. What does that mean? You're capable of infringing upon others' peace. You're capable of infringing upon others' a state of mind. You're capable of that. Well, I'm not. See, that's what I'm saying. You got to go to God and pray this prayer. And the more you pray about forgiveness, about you being forgiven, it's so easy to forgive others. It's so easy to forgive others because the revelation of our flaws causes us to understand, hey, I need an abundance of giving people the benefit of the doubt. Lord, forgive me and forgive them. What did Jesus do? Forgive them for they know not what they do. So forgive us of our, de- of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Here we go. And lead us. Somebody say lead us. Lead us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, evil is not just Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs. And we tend to try to say, you know what, well, that's evil. This is just sin over here. Now, I'll tell you what evil is. Evil is spreading gossip. Evil is creating malice. Evil is instilling, evil is putting your fear on somebody else. Well, all I know is I don't send my kids to church. I don't send my kids to school. All I know is I'm not going to do that because the last thing I want is for my kids to get it. Then we come home and we got it. We go visit our parents and they got it. And then my granddad and my granddad and they, and it's like, okay now. I've made my decision. You made yours. I support your little virtual schooling. You support my little virtual brick and, mo- my, my, my brick and mortar. My kids going to that. But when you start to try to make me feel like somehow or another, I'm missing it as a parent. When God is talking to me about my children, listen, you're, 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 you're trying to sow evil. That's what you're doing. Because now I'm looking at the school funny. Now I'm looking at the teachers funny. Now I'm looking at the principal funny. Now I'm looking at the bus driver funny. Now I'm looking at everybody funny that's got something to do with my kids going to school. And I wasn't even thinking about that until you, who don't want to send your kids to school, came and tried to see that into me. You do your thing. I'll do mine, and we both stay plugged into our Father. Our Father is telling us what to do, not just you. Let me get back in the, in the spirit. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and, and, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> now, I want to deal with this thing. Lead us not into temptation. And you notes, write this down. Every human being is capable of being tempted. That is why it's in the Lord's Prayer. Jesus was telling us, listen, I don't don't care how smart you think you are, how holy you think you are, you are a candidate for temptation. But I don't don't think I'm a candidate. Why why don't you think you're a candidate when Jesus was one? I don't believe that except for Matthew 4. Let's go to Matthew 4 real quick. I don't believe I can be tempted. (laughs) I, 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 I just don't believe that. No. We're going, to see the, we're going to see the only thing that stops temptation. We're going to see that. At least not in temptation. Matthew 4. And Jesus was led up. Let, Matthew 4 verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the what? Huh? Of the spirit into the wilderness or a place of nothing or a place of aloneness. That is why it's so important when a wife or a husband is pouring their heart out to you, what they're saying is, hey, I'm in a place of, I'm in a place of wilderness 
in my heart. I'm trending toward a place of loneliness here. And I'm trying to get you to engage. I'm trying to engage you. And you got to start pausing for that because we're going to see why you need to listen to what they're saying. Because there's a roaring lion that's chipping at their heels. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, look at that now. When he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungered. Nothing worse than a hungry man and, and chaos is going on. Nothing worse than a hungry woman and chaos is going on. Kids want this, the husband want that. And she's like, get me some food and I can operate. And I used to be the kind of husband when I was a little, little, little young buck, little, year, year three in the marriage. You know, if we went to Disney World, it was like, take your lunch, we ain't stopping. <laughs> Kids, don't drink all that juice back there because hey, look, we, we get to Disney World, we getting down this road, we're going to be there on time, we're going to get on those rides at 9 a.m. before that sun comes up, and we're going to have a good time. Well, by the time everybody got there and had ate up all the snacks, had drank everything, everybody was irritable. So Jesus comes out of the wilderness in 40 days, and he hungered, man. And watch this now. Watch this now. You got to know when you're hungered. You got to know when you're hungry for success. Watch yourself. You got to know when you're hungry to be accepted. You got to watch yourself. You got to know when you're hungry to be validated. Watch yourself now. Because that validation may not come from your spouse. It may come from the lady at the copy machine. It may come from the gentleman uh, 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 that you work beside. You got to know when you're hungered. That's why when a spouse is talking to you about, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry for this. You got to pause and pay attention. And so, and, 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 and 40 days and 40 nights, and was after hungered. And when the tempter, who's the tempter? Who? The evil one. The tempter. His job is to tempt. And Jesus knew that. So in the Lord's prayer, he says, listen, when you pray, you pray this. Deliver us, which encompasses the one who's saying the prayer. You're involved in that too. Not just your kids, not just your coworkers. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. And when the tempter came to him, somebody said, well, I can't be tempted. The tempter came to Jesus. He can come to you. The tempter came to Jesus. He can come to your children. The tempter came to Jesus. He can come to your spouse. The tempter came to Jesus. He can come to your sibling. He can come. When he came to him, he said, watch this. This is a key word. This is why we have to pray the Lord's Prayer and understand it. He says, if. So what does he do? In order for him to succeed in temptation, the first thing he's going to do is sow doubt in who God is in your life. It's the first thing he's going to do. He's going to sow doubt about who God is in your life. I really don't need God. It's me, it's me, it's me bringing all this success. It's me, it's me. Well, if God was going to do all of this and that, why hadn't he done this for you? If God... You know, was going to heal it. Why hadn't he healed? You got to know he's tempting you now. He's coming after you now. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word. The word of God is your sword in the midst of temptation. You can't think it away. You got to use the word of God. Jesus spoke it. Listen, he, he spoke out of Deuteronomy. Man doesn't live by bread alone. Man doesn't live by uh, the successes of his children. Man doesn't live by the successes of his spouse. Man doesn't live by, uh, uh, women don't live by the successes of their daughter, the, 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 the education level of their kids. They don't live by that. They live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. <clears throat> then verse 5, we're talking about deliver us from evil, lead us not into temptation. We're gaining a revelation of the Lord's prayer. Then the devil takes him up into a holy city. Look at him. Look how smooth he is. Into a holy city, an environment that's conducive for Jesus to feel like, man, this guy may know what he's talking about. Into a holy city, sits him on a pinnacle. He attempts to put him in pride. See, temptation 
It's going gonna, it's gonna to always try to put you in a place of pride. And once he sets you there, we all know what comes before the fall. We all know. That's why I have, I have, I have nothing to say about how a family handles the kids' education. I have nothing to say about that. I pray for the families every single day. I pray for the youth. I pray for the high schoolers. I pray for the middle schoolers. I pray for the, the tender feet, feet, the journey kids. I pray for them. But guess what? I don't get in so much pride that I have all the answers for virtual schooling and brick and mortar. I don't get into so much pride as a pastor that I have all the answers for virtual church and brick and mortar church. Do you realize there are some people, some churches across the United States, uh, on their website it says masks are encouraged, and they have maskless sections. They have sections for masks, maskless sections, and they turn out 40,000 people a week. I can't look at that and go, oh, I tell you what, that guy really don't know what he's doing. Well, she really don't know, but they don't know what they're doing. Huh? Look. They're being led by God, and obviously, the people are being led by God, and everything is okay. But the tempter will make me think, he wants to make me think that I have all the right answers, and I don't. Me and my wife are just hearing from God and doing what God tells us to do. Amen. Amen. So he takes him up, sits him on a pinnacle of the temple, and says to him, if, 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 if. You are who you say you are. The devil wants, when he tempts you, he wants you to question your identity in God. He wants you to question your identity in God. Well, if you are who you say you are, surely you'd be this by now. And it's like, man, what is he trying to do? He's trying to take away your faith, strip away your confidence in God. So if you be the son of God, hey, what about this? Cast yourself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time you dash thy foot against the song. Let me tell you something. The tempter knew the word of God, too. And he should never know the word of God better than the believer knows the word of God. Remember, he was, up, he, he was sitting right there with God. <laughs> Lucifer was right there with him. The tempter knows the word of God. He's quoting this word right to Jesus. Verse 7, and Jesus said unto him, in the midst of temptation, he said unto him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord thy God. God, have mercy. And again, the devil takes him up into an exceeding high mountain. He's taking him higher now. He, he's, he's taking you higher now. First, you had three contracts. Now, he give you six. First, you got promoted over here. Now, you promoted over here. And it just takes you higher. And you got to ask yourself, okay, where am I at in God in all of this? As I ascend up the ladder in my profession, where am I in God? Am I hearing God or am I hearing the tempter? And it takes him up to a seat in the high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, which is so powerful to me. Because when it talks about the glory of them, we're going to see at the end of the, pair, at the, end of the Lord's Prayer, who owns the glory? And he said unto him, all things I will give thee if you will fall down, bend your knee, and worship me. That's what a job will tell you. That's what a business will tell you. I, I don't worship my business. Ah, uh, yeah. You do what it tells you to do, and when God tells you to do something, you don't do it. It, it, it doesn't take all that. But the business says, get up and go. What, what, what business is taking care of me? Ah, uh, God is touching people's heart to give to your business. God is touching people's heart to buy your founder, the founder of the company's product. God is, God is behind all of that. He's the foundation of that. But if you don't have that revelation, you're going to think it's you. And he said unto him, all these things I give you if you bow down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, get thee, get, get thee hence behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall I or you serve. Repeat this after me. I shall worship, I shall worship the, Lord thy God, the Lord thy God, and him only, and him only 
Shall I serve? So when the Lord's Prayer says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, I want you to know this. That right there, that declaration in that prayer is our desire to live a holy life. When you pray that, you're saying, look, Lord, deliver deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. When you say that, what you're doing is simultaneously confessing, I want to live a holy life before you. My desire is to live a holy life before you. I have a revelation that I can be tempted. I have a revelation that I can stir stuff up. I have a revelation that I I, I can miss it sometimes. I have a revelation that, look, I got to forgive others the same way you forgive me. It's a desire. That line is a desire for us to say, you know what? We're saying, Lord, we want to live holy. When you say, Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What you're saying is, Lord, I desire to live holy before you. And you know, let's write this down. The one thing to be desired, the one thing, as we read the Lord's Prayer and say the Lord's Prayer, as we go from Matthew 6, 1 all the way to the end of the Lord's Prayer, we gain understanding of something. When he talks about, don't be a hypocrite, do it in secret. Your father sees it in secret. Don't do it in the open to be seen of men. <clears throat> the one thing to be desired is not, catch this, is not outward well-being. but inward character in God. As you gain revelation of the Lord's prayer, the one thing to be desired is not an outward well-being, everything looks good on the outside, but the the character of God internally is tempted all over the place with no barriers. The character of God internally is falling short because the word evil means immoral ways. Your husband tries to give, but you sow doubt into him. Your wife tries to serve, but you sow doubt into it. It don't take all that. She's trying to plug into God. I remember one time my wife looked at me. She said, you want to know the chief aggravator to me walking with God? You want to know the chief aggravator to me hearing and walking with God? You want to know that? I was like, yeah, let me know. I want to know who preached that to you. She said, uh, this at our previous church, she said, Derek, you are. I can't pray long enough. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't. And here you are coming to me and this, that, and the other. She said, you are sometimes the chief aggravator to me walking with God. You know what the Lord was telling me? Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. She spends time with me in secret. Shut your mouth. He spends time with me in secret. And we got all of these little prayer police running around trying to figure out, do you spend enough time with God? I don't think I have to tell you that. I don't think I have to tell you that. Because me spending time with God will be evident on the outside, on the inside. And the character of God will be on the inside very strong. Because I don't focus on external things. I don't don't put on a show when I go before God in prayer. I don't put on a show when I come to church. I don't put on a show when I'm leading in prayer. I don't put on a show when I'm preaching. I don't put on a show when I pray over my food before other people. I don't put on a show when I pray over my food before uh, my family dinner. I don't put on a show. I'm not acting. I know that God brought this food to this table. I know that when I pray this, all impurities will be removed from it. I know that when I pray this, food poison is not going to happen. I know when I pray this. Well, I don't know what happened to me. Well, hey, you better keep believing. That's all I can tell you. So the one thing to be, to be desired is not an outward well-being. Excuse me. An outward well-being. But it's inward character. It's the inward character of God that we want to continue to develop. And listen to me. The inward character of God is only developed by spending time with him. Not with believers at church. When the word of God is coming forth, that's a whole interaction. It's grounded seed. That's going to develop some things in you. But you really develop an inward character of God when you spend a long time with him. Amen? Amen. When the prayer talks about deliver us, I want to put this in your spirit, Jesus recognizes that God is our source and his source of deliverance. So when you pray deliver us, what you're saying is my source of deliverance is my God. 
and his word and his deity. That's my source of deliverance. When I say deliver us from evil, I'm not talking to I'm, I'm not talking to I'm talking to the Lord of Lords and the Kings of Kings. Why? Because he's my source of deliverance. Not alcohol, not education, not a good time, not more money, not a promotion on the job, none of that. God is my source of deliverance. He's recognizing and he wants us to see that God is our source of deliverance. And when evil is at the door, he wants us to depend on him. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, the evil one, the tempter, the deceiver. Let me tell you something. When he's at your door, God wants you to know I'm your source of deliverance. See, when it says lead us not into temptation, it, it leads not in temptation. If you inverse that, you can, you, it, it's literally saying, uh, uh, keep us in watchfulness. <laughs> we know God doesn't tempt. The word says that. James 1. God doesn't do any, any, any tempt. And we shouldn't tempt him. But what he's saying is, when you say, lead us not in temptation, what you're saying is, my God always leads me into watchfulness. I know the traps before I see them. I can hear the trap while he's talking. I can see what they're trying to get me to say while they're talking. I can see what they're trying to get me to think about this person while they're talking. God guides you and leads you into watchfulness. And when you see it, you start backing up from it. Oh, oh no, nah, honey, we're not, we're not going to do that. What do you mean we're not going to do it? Well, um, the reason I can't do that is... I know what they did over here. If, if I go over there with that, that's going to endorse what they did over here. And they still haven't got that right over here. Uh, God leads us into watchfulness. We're not going to participate in that. What do you mean? I, I, we're not going to do it. We're not going to let them think it's okay to dishonor over here. What is that? When he said, lead us not in temptation, what he's doing is, what you're, what you're saying is, God, my God, Leads me into watchfulness. He guides that teenager. That teenager gets to that bus stop and he realizes, uh, let me get over here and just wait on the bus by myself. That daughter gets in that school and she, she, she hears the girls and they're talking this and they're talking that. And she's like, well, I'm virtuous. I'm pure. I, I know what my God teaches me. I know what my parents teach me. And, 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 and when you pray that prayer, what's, what's going to happen is God is leading you into watchfulness. And you look at that and you go, no parts of that. Hey, hey, where are you going? Uh, I got to get to class. I, you know, I, I'll catch you guys later. What is that? You have a strong sense of watchfulness. When it says, leads you not into temptation, we know that you can be tempted. And I always told Marvin, I'll tell you this. It's not, what, it's not the nasty stuff in the boys' locker room or the girls' locker room that they pull up on their phones. It's the phone that's passed around. It's not the nasty stuff. And, and my, my daughter said, when I was in middle school, Daddy, that was the nastiest time of my life. It was more nasty in middle school than it was in high school. And it wasn't her phone that was pulling up stuff on the bus. It wasn't her phone that was pulling up stuff in the flag, flag football locker room. It was somebody else who was being tempted and been into the temptation and just showed the phone and the website. And you got to be strong enough to not even let your eyes lock in on it. You know what I'm talking about? You know, you, you, you know when, when somebody's showing you a deal or something, this, that, and the other, and, and they say, come here, let me show you on the website. You don't, even, you don't even look at the tool they're showing you. The first thing you do is you look up at the address. Oh, that's why they, that's why they get them so cheap from. Okay, now, what, what, what are you trying to show me now? That's what happens when that phone gets passed around. You're being tempted. Don't play with it. You go, oh, oh get that out of my face. Oh, w, 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 oh, good God. And later on, the tempter goes, why don't you go ahead and just see what that's about? That's how temptation works. The tempter would tell me sometimes, uh, go ahead and stop her because uh, she's absolutely wrong what she's saying to you. How are you going to let her sit here and continue to talk to you about this thing in a nice, kind, calm way? And boy, she's just way off. Cut her off. I go, man. And Derek, and, 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 and when you said this, and, 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 and when you said this, I was like, wow. I mean, I can't believe you said that. And it kind of made me feel this way. And I was like, I'm saying to myself, I, I, didn't, I, didn't want, I didn't want you to feel that way. I don't. I didn't mean it like that. And the tempter goes, why don't you just cut her off? 
and let her know that she's way off. I learned a long time ago when I use those words right there, you way off. That right there is just, it's flame, it's fuel to the flames. I need to say, you know what, uh, I may be hearing you wrong, uh, and, and forgive me if I am, but are you saying this? Am I doing this? Yes, you are doing it. Golly, I can't believe I'm doing it. I, well, I, I live with you more than anybody. You're doing it, and please course correct it. Okay. And I don't let the tempter cause me to fire back because your husband and your wife, when they come to you and say, you do this, 99.9% of the time, it's a blind spot to you, but it's an open eye to them. They see it all. Why? Because you walk in such holiness that you could never see yourself <laughs> causing your husband or your wife to think, my God, this is so discouraging to come home to this. They think it sometimes. Let me get back into work. <laughs> so Jesus recognizes, recognizes that the Lord is his source of deliverance. Likewise, we are to depend on God when evil is at the door. I don't believe that. Let's go to James 1. We're going to be parked here for probably two weeks. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, leads us not in temptation. James 1. This is where we live. Remember, we're getting down to the nitty gritty of our lives in that Lord's Prayer. The nitty gritty, James chapter 1. <clears throat> and me, you get this ready for me in the uh, message translation. James chapter 1, verse uh, 13. We're talking about the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil. James 1, verse 13. Let no man, somebody say no man. Let no man say when he is tempted that he's tempted of God. God doesn't tempt us. God leads us into watchfulness. Let no man say when he's tempted, well, God just had to put that on me, man, to really get me to slow down. God ain't did that. God brought this corona to slow the whole world down, to see his face in the sky. That's a lie. That's, that's a fable. That's, 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 why, that's spiritual wildness. That's spiritually out of control. God doesn't need the coronavirus to get a father to spend time with his child. God doesn't tempt like that. God doesn't do stuff like that. The enemy, the tempter, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Not God. He says, let no man say when he's tempted, he's tempted of God. Watch this. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man. But every man and woman is tempted when he or she, they're drawn away of their own capability of committing evil. Of their own capability of lusting. Of their own capability of being enticed. See, if nobody's going to talk to my child that kind of way is always living in you, all it's going to take is for some parent in the stands to say something and tempt you, and you're going to jump out of the character of God, and you're going to label it protecting my child. And I, I'd rather model how to, handle it, how, to handle it, how to handle it God's way before my child, before I teach my child, when somebody comes at you, you let them have it. I remember being at a game I was playing, and my daddy was just, he was home from TDY, traveling with the military, and he, he, he didn't play basketball, and he didn't, he didn't know, and he's in the third row, and he's behind the coach, and he's like, put him in the game, man, I got three fouls, I mean, I can't, you just, you got to hush, why ain't my son in the game, I got three fouls, and he's yelling at the ref, he didn't travel, he didn't, I didn't travel, I hand checked. I, I, what, what are you saying? And I remember getting in that van, that conversion van, riding home with him saying, hey, just, 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 just cheer me on. But my gosh, I'm listening to my coaches. But when you are talking certain stuff, you're not talking the game. And my coach is gracing. My coach was six foot seven, six foot seven, played with the Washington Bullets, six foot seven, gray afro. And he would just glance back every now and then. Johnny, hush. Let me tell you something. If, you, if, if, if you've made your mind up, well, I, guess I, I dare somebody to look. Welcome to the real world in sports. 
They're going to jump up and down when they do something good, and they're going to say, get Derek, get, get number 11 out the game. All the way on the, the row eight. Get him out. He doesn't know what he's doing. Two breaths later, get him in the game. Hey, well, why ain't and it's like, man, you got you, the, the tempter will drive you nuts in that situation. So never say what you're going to do. You nurse it and rehearse it. The tempter is saying, you, 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 you have flesh adhesion for me to stick to. And that's what temptation is. If you walk around with this, this adhesion of nobody's going to tell me this, nobody's going to talk to me that way, nobody's going to do this, my wife don't do this, my husband don't pay no attention to me, my wife don't pay no attention to me, what's happening is you become an adhesion for the tempter to stick to with that temptation. And the Bible says, flee it. Don't play with it. That's why I said in the Lord's Prayer, do not play with temptation. Let me see it in the message translation. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Go back. But when every man, verse 14, is tempted, he's drawn away of what's on the inside of him. He's enticed by what's on the inside of him. And when lust has conceived, it brings forth that sinful mouth from, from the bleachers. It brings forth that sin. Why did you, why did, I'm saying, why did you, why did you kiss her? I'm, I'm trying to, why, why did you do that? Oh, it just happened. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. You've been gazing at it. You've been thinking about it. You've been nursing and rehearsing. It didn't just happen. He says, this is why you pray. Deliver us from evil and lead us not into temptation. <clears throat> Let's read it in the message translation. Don't let anyone under pressure give into give in evil. Uh, don't let anyone under pressure <clears throat> to give into evil and say this right here. God is trying to trip me up. God is impervious to evil. Let's keep going. And puts evil in no one's way. Watch this. The temptation to give into evil comes from us and us only. So in the Lord's Prayer, the reason Jesus says pray this, he knows we have the capability. And we are the origin. It derives from the on, on the inside of us. That's why you plant the character of God in you. Is there more in the message? We have no one to blame but the leering or the gazing, the nursing and rehearsing. I lusted after my wife in the club. The club was called Thumpers. I, I was looking at her, and I seen those long legs. I said, I, 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 said, I don't care what else is going on in here. I, I said, Tojo, take this, take this $100 bill over there to her and let her know if I could just say hi and hello to her at the end of the night, she can get the other half from me. But, but she's kind of tall. Yes, y'all. She's long, lean. She's luscious. I just, 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 just do that for me. And man, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm seduced by, I'm leering. Seducing flare up of our own lust is what was happening with me. And I didn't have a license, but lust gets pregnant. Thinking about it, rehearsing it. Nobody's going to talk to my child. You, you do that enough, you're going to get pregnant with it. And lust has a baby. And that baby is sin, and sin grows up to adulthood, and here's what becomes the real killer. You kissed him. You touched her. You stole it. You cursed him out. You're less than a man. Oh, boy. How long have you been thinking about that? Because you're the sin of the mouth. And let me tell you something about your words. Let me tell you something about your words. You can say, I'm sorry, but those words like that, they cut deep. And every time you look at him and say you love him, now you got competing words that you've sown into him or her that says, you know what, I hear you say you love me, but I know what you said in the heat of the moment. And in the heat of the moment, lust is conceived, and it, it's, it's conceived in us. We're drawn away and enticed by what's going on in us. That had been going on in you for a long time. Amen? Repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, receive I receive your watchfulness, your watchfulness over, my life. over my life. I declare, I declare that the evil one, the, evil the tempter, the deceiver, the deceiver has, no place has no place in my life. In my life. I, will I will cast down, cast down every thought, every, thought, every imagination, every imagination that, tries that tries to exalt itself against God's, word. against God's word. I'm developing, I'm developing my, inward my inward character in God. In God. I'm, developing I'm developing my inward character, my inward character in, God. in God. I declare, I declare that you are my father. You are, my father. You are in heaven. I hallow your name. I depend on you for my daily bread. 
I declare that you are my source of deliverance. My children, I declare in my sight and out of my sight, they hear your voice. And you are their source of deliverance. And the tempter has no place in their lives. I come against anything, any competing word that tries to remove them off the word of God. I come against it. I push back against it with your word. I stand before you and I believe everything in the Lord's prayer. I'm delivered from evil. I am led by watchfulness. You are all knowing and we receive your guidance. The tempter will not trip me up. Will not trip my daughter up. Will not trip my son up. Will not trip my family up. Will not trip my business up. Father God, you are Lord and Lord of all. And I submit my life, my goings, my thoughts, my plans to you. Go ahead and shout about that. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Were you blessed by the word of God? Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. We're going to continue to deal with deliver us and lead us not in temptation. We're going to continue to deal with that in the Lord's Prayer as we gain revelation of it. And now when you pray it, you're going to know exactly what you're saying. Let me get my prayer counselors down front real quick. And those of you joining us online, we